Oh God in heaven, how we thank you for your loving kindness. Oh, in your tender mercies. You have looked beyond every one of our faults and you have seen our real need. Thank you for what you have said to us in your sung word. Now what you're about to do in your preached word in demonstration and power. Think with my mind. Think with my mind, Lord, and speak with my lips that even babes will understand. That men in darkness will come to the marvelous light and ask what must they do to be saved. We thank you, Lord, for this precious opportunity. So many that have squandered this opportunity to be in person. But we thank you for presence of mind. A faith to believe that you are the God of impossible. Hear us today that it may be pleasing in your sight. Forgive us of our sins. For Lord, on our best day, we have fallen short of your glory. In deed and thought, help us to be more like you. Now here am I, my heart, my soul, and your are yours. Do it only you can in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we praise you. And the people of God said amen. amen. And the people of God said amen. amen. And the people of God said amen. amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Listen to me. Listen to me. I need you to do this. Uh, the Lord said to me to tell you all, the person in your left and your right, I need you to speak a word of encouragement to them. Come on right now. Just to your left and your right, just speak a word of encouragement to them. A word of encouragement. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're worried about. But I want you to know the Lord said it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Stop worrying about. Stop letting the devil run in your mind. Tell them right now. It's going to be all right. The Lord said be encouraged. Be be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Now receive what has been said to you. Receive what has been said to you. Don't think it's church stuff. Don't think it's church talk. Receive what the Lord is saying to you. That it's going to be all right. devil's been running laps in your mind all week long and trying to forecast stuff in your life. The devil is a liar. The truth ain't in him. The Lord has spoken. You are going to make it because God has given you another opportunity to open your eyes in this world. Be encouraged. Sometimes you got to speak over your life. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Are y'all with me in here? Sometimes you got to speak over your life. Encourage yourself in the law. For he has made us the head and not the tail. Driving in your car, sitting in your living room. Will I make
make it? Am I going to make it? Yeah, you're going to make it. If you can't make it, God ain't God. And I ain't serving a God that ain't God over my life, in my life, and through my life. Tell your neighbor, you've been giving him too much credit. The devil, you've been giving the devil too much credit. Look the other way and say, neighbor, I don't want to leave you out. I don't want to leave you out. I don't want to leave you out. Be it unto you. As you believe God can do it, you receive what he has said. Just picking haters off of me right now. They said I wasn't gonna ever be anything. Hey! Some of y'all didn't come to have church today. You should stay at home. This is where I get my breakthrough. This is where I get my energy. This is where I release all that negativity and let God come into my life. Because I need strength of the journey, baby. Come on. Come on. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Are we buffeting? We're buffeting. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me go to work. The Lord used a stranger. <laughs> the Lord used a stranger to help you receive. In the Gospel of John, John chapter 9, we're going to finish this out today. I'm not going to be long. I'm just going to exercise and massage that last testimony. Uh, we're buffeting, huh? Buffeting bad. To those of you who are in the virtual verse, we are about to... I need my other glasses. In the red case. Then the red case. Um, we're about a, two weeks away from fiber. Thank you all. Three weeks away. Well, after the day, we probably be like we can have. <laughs> Call Cox Cable and tell them not only are you gonna stop watching this broadcast, you're gonna move all your service. AT&T I'm already over there We pay too much money 
for this mess. And it's happening over here on the black side of town because y'all not investing on the black side of town. I called it like your T.I. is. Yeah. In the Gospel of John, John chapter 9, verse 13. Let me finish this out. I, I know y'all been looking anticipatory to this, uh, this close. Careful with that. In John chapter 9, I'm not going to be long. Verse 13, it says, And they brought him, and they brought, excuse me, and they brought to the Pharisees the man who was formerly been blind. Yeah. Now it was on the Sabbath day that when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. Um, he said to them, he put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. I want you to pay attention to how he hones his testimony. Okay? If you, I don't have time to go through it, but if you go back up there, he, he's lengthy in what happens. But the more you with him, it gets shorter. Then I washed, and now I see. Verse 16, some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. I want to talk to you a message in your misery. But so that you are clear, I'm going to just focus on this man's testimony. For those of you who are catching me for the first time, for those of you who are catching this message for the first time, uh, I want to tell you, first of all, that this man was born blind for this moment. This man was born blind for this moment. One more time, his pain and his misery, his disappointments, his joy, his hope was put on pause for this one moment. For the Savior to demonstrate his power over darkness. I'm going to subscribe to you and submit to you one more time that nothing in life happens to you. Nothing happens to you in this world that the Lord has not permitted it for the moment when God will get out of your misery a message for those of you who have been watching you. The title of the message is self-explanatory that there is a message in your misery. 
And oftentimes we acquaint misery with sin or with some misdealings I have done or have been done to me. But the truth of the matter is, we found out in the first two episodes of this message that this man was born blind intentionally because God one day knew he was going to send the Savior by so that God could get the glory out of this man's misery. I wish I had some help in here. I know that's grown up talk because we want to live blessed and highly favored. Yeah, and we don't want to have any struggles or tragedies in our lives because we equate struggle and tragedy with the unfairness of God or my own plight in life. I was born in the wrong family. I hooked up with the wrong person. But I want to say to you today that your misery has a message for somebody in your vicinity. And this man, it does not say how long he had been blind other than the fact that he was born blind. But we don't know if he was 12, 13, 14. We know uh, we could surmise, but he was there alone in darkness. As I told y'all before, never beholding a sunrise or a sunset. Smelling the rose, but couldn't tell you what the rose looked like. <clears throat> Are oh, y'all going to talk to me in a day? It was this moment that this man's joy was put on hold. Did I tell y'all that? That his hopes were put on pause. Because Jesus one day was going to come by and demonstrate in his mess, in his misery, a message for everybody. Are y'all with me in here today? The truth of the matter is, my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the Lord, the Savior of the universe, had to demonstrate his power over darkness because it's not our right to live and operate in darkness. Are y'all with me in here? You do know that we are his people, and because we are his people, he said we are the salt of the earth and that we are the light of the world. Note that God did not call us the sugar of the world, but the salt of the world, because we are the preserving agents from the rot and decay of society. Are y'all going to talk to me here today? We discovered that this man was born blind for the purpose of bringing a joy to those who are in darkness, that God sees you in your dark place. And at the appropriate time, God is going to come by and open up the blind eyes in your life. We talked about the fact that we need to let God heal us because too often we try to tell God how to restore us, how to make us whole. But your wholeness may not be the wholeness that God wants. Can I, can I, can I talk to you right quick in a hurry? Uh, I used to, growing up, used to hate the scars on my legs. But I told you that scars are a reminder of what didn't kill you. Every scar on my body has a story. Do I have about 10 of y'all in here that every scar has a story? And if you've lived long enough like me, you don't mind telling the story. The pain has gone away, but you can remember just how you got it. And how long it took for it to heal. Yeah. Are y'all women here today? In other words, don't try to tell God how to heal your blindness. Because he may want to use button spit to make you see again. Are y'all women here? We discovered that people won't let you live past your past. And I come to tell somebody, don't let nobody rob you of your breakthrough. My preach is rising up in me. Don't. There are some folk that will never let you live down what you've gone through and what you're doing and what you've done. Because all they remember is where they found you. But the devil is a lie. Don't let them rob you of your breakthrough. Are y'all women here today? Don't be ashamed of your past. Because your past is your strength for your future. I just preach right there. I said, I just preach right there. There is still power in God's deliverance. Are y'all with me in here today? I said, there's power in God's deliverance. 
and some people won't let you live past your past. Have I got any help in here? But your past has a testimony. And you got to learn how to tell your testimony. I wish I had some Holy Ghost cheerleaders. Because every testimony got some power to it. Have I got any help in here? He says that the man put mud on my eyes. And I went and washed. I went blind. But I came back singing. Is there anybody on your road that got a testimony? I said a test. A money. That you were put to the test. But you got a story behind your test. Because no matter how bad it was, you're here today. High five somebody and tell them I'm here today. Hospitals and doctors after doctors, lawyers after lawyers, but I'm here today. Struggle after struggle, but I'm here today. I wish I had some Holy Ghost shooting. Don't, don't, don't think I'm just blessed and highly favored. It costs a lot to get to where I am right now. Y'all not praying with me in here today. And everybody ought to have a testimony. Did you hear what I said? Everybody ought to have a testimony. And you can't let nobody rob you of your testimony. Sure, I'm about to preach right now. Because my testimony goes like this. I went to church one day. I didn't mean to stay. But my soul got happy. And I stayed all day. Is there about 10 of y'all that got that testimony? I went in. Yeah. Wasn't trying to do all that other stuff, but the Lord got a hold of me. Yeah. And before I knew it, it was 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock, but my soul was happy. Yeah. Some of y'all going to be making it off of residual prayers today. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody got a testimony. Yeah. Are y'all women here today? I said, I heard a voice from heaven. Yeah. Say, come unto me. All ye that are heavy laden And I'll give you rest And I want to tell somebody I came to God Toe up from the floor But I found a resting place in it I came in limping But I came out walking out With God's power on me right now Are y'all with me here today Everybody's got a testimony Are y'all with me here uh, watch this Tell your testimony But then number two You got to understand this That, that you got to be authentic Your testimony will authenticate your faith Are y'all women here? Are y'all women here today? Your, 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 your testimony Will authenticate your faith Jesus does not give him The roads to Romans he didn't give him God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that you might have your eyes back. He put mud on his eyes and told him to go wash. And the man came back sin. Are y'all with me in here today? Uh, brothers and sisters, I want to tell somebody right now that, the, that, that this man, they asked him, who is this man? Yeah. Said, I don't know who he is, but he ain't no shyster. I believe that he is the man of God. They said he can't be the man of God because he's healing on the Sabbath day. I don't know what y'all saying, but I tell you one thing. I was blind. Yeah. But now I see. Y'all yeah. don't know when to shout at him. You see, everybody has an individual testimony that can be only authenticated by you and you alone. Yeah. My belief in Christ doesn't have anything to do with whether you accept me or not. Yeah. I know what he did in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I know where I was when I met the man. Yeah. He healed me first, and then I got a relationship with after him. I'm done. He says, he says, tell your testimony. And when he, listen, he's blind. He don't have nothing to say. But after he opens his eyes, all he, they keep asking him, how do you see? He put mud on my eyes. I went and washed. And I came back seeing. Almost as if they want him to change his testimony. Like that ain't good.
good enough for them. Do y'all know folk like that that you tell with them what the Lord has done for you? And it's like, it's got to be more than that. Well, you don't know what dark place I was in when the Lord found me, baby. It may not be anything to you, but you don't know how dark it was where I was. And I went and washed and came back seeing. They said, do you think that he is a prophet? They asked a man with a testimony his opinion <laughs> of whether or not he was real or phony. Y'all don't know when to shout. He says, he is the man. Buddha didn't make me see. The Dalai Lama didn't give me eyes. I've been to their churches. <laughs> Muhammad didn't give me eyes. This man, I don't know his name, but I know he put blood on my eye. And I went and washed. And I came back seeing. Tell your neighbor, tell your testimony. And your testimony ought to be honed the more you tell it. No, no, no. Brenda, we might, we might not, we not make it to luck. It ought to get honed the more you tell your testimony. Tiffany, uh, I, I told y'all about these, these people I grew up in high school. And, uh, you know, I told y'all about my, my superfly days. And I used to tell them all the time that I met the Lord. Yeah. Are y'all with me in here today? And I would go through the whole scenario of how the Lord called me. Now my testimony is just this. He said if I can use Moses and he was a murderer, I can use you. That sums it up for me right there. If God can use a murderer to deliver people, he can use a wretch like me to stand in the pulpit and preach to union for 37 years and tell them the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Well, I wish I had somebody in here right now. Just whisper in your neighbor's ear and tell them your testimony. He saved me one day. He restored me one day. He's making me. He's... mother it's something about people that like to see you where you are he had to first of all convince the community the neighbors and the friends and then he had to move from convincing the neighbors and the friends to going and convincing church folk him to church they brought him to the church house and y'all know we are some we are some critical people we go to church and don't believe that God can transform people I wish I had some Holy Ghost chili I wish I had some Holy Ghost chili. We we see each other pulling up in the parking lot. Here, here she come. That ain't gonna wash away all that stuff she did in the past. Baby, if you gotta focus on my past in order to feel better about yourself, you go right ahead. But I am not the same person that I was when you met me. Tell your neighbor, he changed my life. He changed my heart. He changed my taste buds. He changed my mind because he is a mind regulator and a heart fixer. There's a message in your misery. I said there's a message in your misery. I 
think there was a commercial that said this, how you like me now? How you like me now? He had to convince his neighbors. And then he had to, he had to convince his friends. And then they took him to church. I'm looking at y'all Pharisees right now. I'm looking at y'all Pharisees right now. Y'all looking at me. He up there doing all that preaching. Listen, 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 listen. Don't let the external fool you. I'm not perfect, but I have had a change on the inside. There's nothing worse, Renee, than church examination. I'm not letting you go. It ain't nothing worse. That's why some of y'all ain't got no friends in union right now. Y'all are so critical. You can't get past my limp to know who I am. You can't get past the scars on the exterior to get to know that there's a changed person on the inside of me. Tell your neighbor right now, please be patient with me. Because God is still working on me right now. Friends. Now, friends. And this, this is the diagram of a conversion. Friends. Because they won't let you be saved. Family. And then the church. But here's how you shut the church up. It's in verse 17. <laughs> there it is in verse 17. The church folk asked him, who do you think this man is? Who do you say that he is? Because, listen, testimony will authenticate your faith. When God has really changed you, you don't know all of you don't know the ins and outs of Christ. That comes through relationship. Some of y'all want to know all about Jesus on your first church outing. You can't get to know about an infinite God on one visit for two and a half hours. He is the world and the world over and the universe from everlasting to everlasting. You got to have a relationship. I promise you I'm done. I promise you I'm done. But some of y'all, I have been your pastor for 37 years and there are still, still things about me you do not know. I heard you. I heard you say it. I don't want to know. I don't want you to know. Because then I wouldn't be your pastor. Only certain people get to go behind the veil. I wish I had some Holy Ghost cheering. You ain't the same person you are in here that you are at home. Come on, help me somebody in here today. You are completely different. You walk around passing gas and cussing folk out. And I'm sorry, biological discharge. Don't even say I'm sorry. On the phone gossiping left and right, up and down, and come in here talking about, hey, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> Who do you say he is? Muhammad didn't give me eyes. The Dalai Lama didn't give me eyes. 
believe that he is the son of God. He is a prophet. And I have been with him this so I have been with him long enough to know that I know without a shadow of a doubt that when I close my eyes on this side, I will see him for myself. And for him, I will behold not another for at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord and Savior. And I'll put that all on that. I'm closing. Closing. Vaughn, here's where it get good. Here's where irrefutable evidence takes place that there's a message in your misery. They call for his parents. And what the parents did, no one else could do. They said, yes, that's, that's my kid. And we tried all kinds of prescriptions and optical surgeries. God gave him everything, but he didn't give him eyes. I can authenticate that he was born this way. Because whatever you're going through in your life, it's because God has a message in your misery. And until you embrace that and stop blaming surrounding people and surroundings and all of that and just understand that you have become an instrument of God's glory. It may happen in this world. Or Freddie, it's gonna, if it don't happen in this world, excuse me, it will happen in the world to come. They said this. They said, that's him. But he's old enough to speak for himself. <laughs> Until I turned 18. I had to have my parents vouch for me until I became grown. It took them to authenticate my word. But they say something in the text and I'm done, I promise you. They said he's old enough. Let him speak for himself. And I come to tell y'all as I get ready to go to Calvary, that one day you're going to have to speak for yourself. Because mama can't do it and daddy can't do it and sisters can't do it. You're you going to have to speak for yourself. As I tell my kids like my dad told me, I got to meet him for myself. And you won't get into heaven on my coattail. You got to know him for yourself. I'm so glad one dark Friday he died on Calvary. Is there anybody in here know he died on Calvary? Whom he ain't between two thieves? He died, but he didn't stay dead. Somebody holler early Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands. And I'm glad about it. Because I'm saved by that blood. The doors of the church are open. Tell your testimony. Your testimony will authenticate your belief in him. Nobody can speak for you. You got to speak for yourself. Thank you for everything I've gone through. Thank you for everything I'm going to go through. Because you're writing a message for somebody who's reading my book. <laughs> 